Well, doctors say there are two new measles cases in Oregon, both connected to the outbreak in Marion County. The two patients live in Multnomah and Clackamas counties. These are the sites where they may have exposed other people to measles. We've got the exact dates and times they were there listed on KGW.com. You know, we only had seven weeks with her, but she was so loved. A Salem woman is hoping her tragedy can be a lesson for other parents. Her seven week old baby girl was happy and healthy just nine days ago, but now she's gone. Ginger McCall believes her daughter's death could have been prevented. She took a little Evie to Salem Health when she started making a terrible moaning noise. She was having trouble breathing and running a fever. She says the hospital gave Evie Tylenol, ran blood tests, and then discharged her, telling her Evie had a normal virus. But once they went home, Evie got worse. They ended up going back to the ER. That's where Evie deteriorated quickly. She was intubated and transported to Portland. The next day, doctors told Ginger and her husband that Evie had meningitis and sepsis, and she was brain dead. They had to make the tremendously difficult decision to take her off of life support. I mean, she was just beautiful and she was so healthy and we were, we were so happy. <laughs> and it was just so sudden and it seems like it should have been preventable. That noise that she was making, I just wish that they had paid more attention. Just a tragic story. Ginger wants other parents to know about that unusual cry or moan. It's a common thing or a sign of meningitis. Ginger says doctors told her Evie had late onset group B strep and the infection led to meningitis. She told the hospital she had group B strep when pregnant and wishes they had taken that information seriously. Now Salem Health told us that this was a heartbreaking loss, but say that they cannot comment on the individual case. A Northwest Portland street is back open this morning after a crash that left a driver and their dog badly hurt. This all happened just around 630 last night. You'll notice a car. You see it there on its top. We're told that car hit the trailer of a semi as it was making a turn. This caused the car to roll over on top of it on its top. The driver and dog were found inside. Both were rushed to the hospital with serious injuries. It happened on Northwest Front Avenue between 26th Place and Kittridge Avenue. Officers say that the driver of the semi was not hurt in the crash. Dante, well, the man so accused of sexually assaulting a six year old is in jail this morning. 30 year old Dante Howe er, entered a plea of not guilty yesterday. He was arrested after police say he sexually assaulted the boy in a Pioneer Place mall bathroom last Sunday. Police say he confessed to the crimes. His next hearing is in April. Well, finally, we just realized it was time to to unveil a plan. Street Roots, the Portland newspaper by and about the homeless, wants the city to change how it handles emergency calls involving homeless people. That was the executive director you just heard from. The Street Roots special report is called Rethinking Our First Response. It advocates for building street response teams in Portland staffed with EMTs and mental health experts. It would be similar to a program in Eugene called Cahoots. As part of the program, 911 operators will dispatch those teams instead of police for things like unwanted persons calls or someone experiencing a mental health crisis. We showed the plan to people living on the streets. I think that's the perfect solution because it can solve a whole lot of problems. When the police are involved, a lot of people just jump to conclusions and think the worst. And they clam up and don't want to talk to the police. It always happened like that. We already discriminated against, so the best thing to do is Wait till somebody else come to talk to them. Street Roots staff estimate the program would cost $4.8 million a year. The mayor's office says they're communicating with Street Roots to talk about the idea, and the mayor visited Eugene to see how the program works there. Well, good news for Alpen Rose Dairy fans. It will stay open after all. Earlier this month, three siblings sued their two aunts who are managers of the family trust. The aunts had made a deal to liquidate the business and sell the land to a developer. Now, the siblings sued to stop them from doing that, arguing their aunts were violating a signed family contract to honor their grandfather's wishes that Alpen Rose remain a dairy and a place for the community. 
For years, Alpen Rose has been home to an annual Easter egg hunt and the Little League Softball World Series. March Madness is in full swing. The Oregon Ducks are on their way to the third round of the NCAA tournament after scoring a big win over Wisconsin. The 12th seeded Ducks put on a show against the 5th seeded Badgers. The pride of West Lynn, Peyton Pritchard, led the way for Oregon with 19 points and 8 assists. The Ducks upset Wisconsin 72 to 54 and are on to the round of 32 been so much fun coaching them this last month uh, just because they're they're all in and and they're all trying to trying to help the team not bad for a team that was not on pace to even make the tournament during the season sunday night they'll play uc irvine another team that pulled off an upset on a friday no upset in Eugene as the Ducks women won the Battle of Oregon Schools. The second seeded Ducks handled business against Portland State, the 15 seed. Oregon scored the first 12 points of the second half and never looked back. They win it 70 to 48. I think we're all just like mentally so focused and engaged and looking forward to the next game that, um, yeah, sky's the limit for us right now. The Ducks will face Indiana on Sunday. Oregon won the only meeting between these two schools back in 1984. The winner will advance to the regionals here in Portland next weekend. Our focus today shifts to Corvallis. The Oregon State Beavers open up their tournament run at Gill Coliseum. They're the four seed going up against 13 seed Boise State. These teams haven't met in 19 years back in 2000. Tip-off is this afternoon in Corvallis at about 3 p.m.